InfoWars.com. We're posting it right now on InfoWars.com as well. Bill Ayers. Is he a terrorist? A communist? Question mark? A liar? A bomb exploded early this morning in the Pentagon, and left-wing terrorists telephoned newspapers to say they were responsible. We felt pretty grim and pretty determined at the same time that we were going to see this thing through. At midday, the Associated Press got a phone call from a man saying he was with the Weather Underground and that bombs would explode at the Departments of Interior and Agriculture and the Smithsonian before the day was out. The sense was that we had to do whatever we had to do in order to stop the war. People calling themselves members of the Weather Underground last night planted bombs in federal office buildings in Washington and Oakland, California. We figured out how to use guns and how to use bombs. I mean, we, we taught ourselves, we trained ourselves how to do it. Some people felt, literally, that the bigger the mess we could make, the better. Credit for the Capitol bombing was claimed in a letter received by the Associated Press today, signed by the Weather Underground. The Underground Weatherman Organization claimed responsibility for the San Francisco and Sacramento bombings. The explosion destroyed one of the Pentagon's 140 women's restrooms and blasted out a wall on the fourth floor. And I've been quoted again and again as saying, I don't regret it. And frankly, and, and saying, I, I don't think we did enough. And I don't think we did enough. Bill Ayers, thank you so much for coming on with us today. Again, BillAyers.org. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, you know, I've never heard of that, but that's fascinating. You know, I'm so bewildered about what you're talking about. I'm, uh, is, I didn't know he was doing that. I had no idea. I see nothing. I know nothing. You, you, you've got these great uh, theories, but I don't know. Uh, we're not talking the same language. But uh, this is news to me. I have no idea what you're referring to. Again, I know nothing about George Soros. I, I'm not sure what that means, Alex. I don't know what you're referring to. I see nothing. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. I have no idea what you're referring to. I don't know what, again, what are you referring to? Never have been. I don't know what you're referring to. Who are you talking about? And I don't even know what that means. I, I, I hear your paranoia eking through, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Because you know what I'm going to do with all this. We're going to take this live interview and then take clips of what you're saying and then and then show them throughout. That's the whole point. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I see nothing. Well, where do you want to start? They estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. Then let me just start with communism itself because most communists say they're socialist but then when you get around them in person they they start telling you about violent overthrows and the plan to take over do you endorse the type of communism we saw uh in russia in china or or how would you really describe yourself well the answer to your question is no um but you know i've been a person in my whole life as an educator i've opposed the notion of labeling people in a simple-minded way but yes i am opposed to capitalism in recognizing a communist physical appearance counts for nothing if he openly declares himself to be a communist we take his word for it i think that we should downsize the pentagon by about 90 percent uh, i think we should stop the war industry i think we should stop arming the the dictators and petty fascists all over the world. I think we should become a nation among nations, not the uber nation, not the controller of everything. So in that sense, Alex, we've already found a point of unity. Very good tactics about getting a point of unity. Why, if you were a Green Beret in a village with the village elders having a debate, you'd find that first point of unity, common ground. In a month, you'd have them fighting for you. And I understand that, but, but you're not a Green Beret. You fight for a different army. Uh, this is a guy who lives in my neighborhood, who is a uh, professor of English in Chicago, uh, who I know and who I have not uh, received some official endorsement from. He's not somebody who I exchange ideas from on a regular basis. What is your view of Barack Obama then? 
I've always had the same view of Barack Obama as long as I've known him. I've known him for a long, long time. Barack Obama, as he said of himself in the 2008 campaign, and as he said it, as he's defined himself all through his political life, he says of himself, I'm a moderate, middle of the road, pragmatic, compromising politician. That's who he said he is. That's who he is. The right wing looked at him and said, no, he's not that. What he is instead is a secret Muslim who pals around with terrorists and has socialist ideas. I have yet to see a socialist idea come out of Barack are you Obama. Are you kidding? Okay. He's talking about free community college and open borders? Put simply, what I'd like to do is to see the first two years of community college free for everybody who's willing to work for it. Last week, I sent a letter to Congress asking them to increase penalties on smugglers and to give us flexibility to move migrants through the system faster. What do you think about Obama wanting a domestic security force just as big and just as strong as our military and having youth brigades chanting his name? I'm, uh, is that, I didn't know he was doing that. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. Obama speaks our race to America. Yes, we did. I am change. And this is what I wear. Uh, you know, I knew Barack Obama about as well as thousands and thousands of other people. It's not that we we weren't intimate friends. We never shared a milkshake with two straws. Never. All right. Well, I went, nobody ever said you did that. You'd have to but be cuddling to be doing that. Close friends. I was not. You never dated Barack Obama. I never dated him. Right. Okay. Toward the end of 1968, I had really decided that I was committed to being a part of what I thought was going to be a really serious and ongoing. Uh, rebellion upheaval that had the potential of not just ending the war but of really overthrowing the capitalist system who, who funds you because i've read you're connected to the ford foundation carnegie and others have you ever got any funding from those guys never and i don't even know what that means who funds me i'm a retired professor i live modestly like other retired professors i'm not sure what you you're mean. saying there's not a cia program back to the 50s to fund liberation theology that I know you're fully aware of at university campuses. I, I, I hear your paranoia eking through, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I, liberation theology has nothing to do with campuses. It's a movement within the Catholic Church. Is it a left-wing movement in the Catholic Church? Yes, it is. Does it come out of Brazil? It does. Does Pope Francis, to some extent, uh, is he some extent influenced by that? Apparently he is. Oh, boy. Uh, that has to do with me. I see nothing. Are you excited about Pope Francis and his uh, liberation theology? It's hard for me to get excited about a pope. Uh, I know that for those of you who are Catholic, he's infallible, so I guess the Catholics must be excited about him. I think that when he says, who am I to judge, and when he opens himself to the possibility of greater freedom for women, I think those are good things. And, of course, carbon taxes for George Soros, though. I, I'm not sure what that means, Alex. I mean, I know you've got the, a big paranoid background that's somewhere bubbling up, but I don't know. I thought you that. don't know who I am. Hold on a minute. A big I paranoid background. Mao killed 84 million people, according to the Chinese government. The CIA says 60 million. Are you saying that I shouldn't be worried about communism? I didn't say that at all. You said something about George Soros. I don't know anything about George Soros. So all right, let me ask you this. Drawing on. I don't know mm -hmm. what you're drawing on. So You know yourself. nothing about George Soros. And we have a big problem. Global warming requires big investment, and that could be the motor of, of, of the world economy. You've got these great uh, theories, but I don't know. Uh, we're not talking the same language. I see nothing. I know nothing. Well, exactly. You're speaking <laughs> academia speech where you're this nice, mild mannered guy. Uh, and you're there with your uh, significant other, Bernadine Dorn. I guess you guys were never involved in any bombings or anything, right? No, that's not true. We were involved in trying to stop the murder of 6,000 people a week by our government that dragged on for 10 years. We conducted, we, I was involved in nonviolent sit-ins. I was involved in all kinds of tactics that were legal. And eventually we did turn to, um, uh, to what I would call uh, extreme vandalism. We destroyed property to raise a screaming uh, opposition to the murder of 6,000 people. You didn't bomb police officers or blind police officers? Not at all. Nothing like that ever happened. I know it's part of the narrative of the right, but it's just not true. Really? So Weatherman bombs never wounded police? 
I'm sorry? Weatherman bombs never wounded police. Never. Because you know what I'm going to do with all this. We're going to take this live interview and then take clips of what you're saying and then, and then show them throughout. That's the whole point. I, I don't know what you're talking about. The FBI said the Weather Underground Organization, which took credit for the bombing, is the same radical group which was responsible for the bombing of the U.S. Capitol in 1971 and the Pentagon in 1972. They will fight the internal army, which is the police force. Yes, more physical contact if that's necessary. Whatever it takes, we'll do by any means possible. There's no way to be committed to nonviolence in the middle of the most violent society that history's ever created. I'm not committed to nonviolence in any way. I don't want to waste our time here with a he said, she said. I go to your website, BillAyers.org, and there's a red star on a black background up there. It looks pretty Maoist to me. Uh, you say you didn't like Mao. Was Larry Grathwald wrong that you guys followed a Maoist cultural revolution style system at the Weatherman? Yeah, he was wrong and he was lying. But the red star on the black background is also the signet for Heineken beer and Macy's. So be careful what you worry about. But here's the oh, thing. Oh, come on, man. You're a famous commie. Fred, just no, admit it. You love linen. There are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. First of all, I'm not famous. Secondly, I don't know what you meant when you said... Bill Ayers supporters call in. You, we haven't had one substantive exchange, you and me. So I don't know what one would think to be a supporter. You mean if somebody has read one of my books and has something to say about it? We haven't talked about anything substantive. Okay, well, you're, again, you're setting and defining things like MSNBC saying parents, your kids don't belong to you. Let me ask when you this question. Do you support abortion? Wait, when did I say that? When did I say parents don't belong to their kids? I said MSNBC said that. No, they did not. What are you talking about? I they no said we need to break through this view that you know kids belong to their parents and that they actually belong to the wider community. I'm not, you know, I'm so bewildered about what you're talking about. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Here's where I stand, uh, Professor Ayers. I don't know if you've read None Dare Call It Conspiracy by Gary Allen. I read that book back when I was like 14 years old. Since then, um, pretty much all of it has been proven to be accurate from my perspective, where ultra-rich crony capitalists fund socialist and communist movements, but also fascist movements, because they like to deal with command and control systems with domesticated populations. And I think that history's shown that collectivism delivers hell on earth and forced work camps. Now, that's why I disagree with you fundamentally uh, and I guess you believe that we have a real form of capitalism and you disagree with that. I don't believe we have capitalism. I believe we have fascism sitting on top of a socialist management system and that the left-right paradigm that's taught is a fraud. What do you say? I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, you know, I've never heard of that, but that's fascinating. I don't know what, again, what are you referring to? Never have been. I don't know what you're referring to. Who are you talking about? And I don't even know what that means. Oh, boy. Well, that's that's the hardcore commie trying to, ch trying to, trying to charm us. And, oh, I don't know this. Oh, I don't know that. And for radio listeners, we show the cops he bombed that he blinded and, 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 and hurt, and, or, or the weatherman quote did, that he led. Uh, and we uh, show the documentation, the big government foundations funding him directly uh, with mainstream news articles. So that's really a TV piece. So I'm just adding some of that for the radio listeners to understand that the guy is an absolutely deceptive creature, as if you need me to tell you.